Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your wonderful hospitality that allows us to have uh, this meeting here. I want to thank uh, Madam Rajavi. I don't, I've heard her speak many times. I don't think there could be a more clear difference uh, between what we just saw and the way that the uh, mullahs uh, value women. Uh, and then, of course, on the other side, Madam Rajavi, who stands up for equal rights for women in one of the most progressive, uh, pr one of the most oppressive regimes in the history of the world. I want to speak briefly about the acid attack. These are not acid attacks by street criminals. These acid attacks are uh, fomented by a group called the Basiji, which are condoned, not only condoned by the government, but the Iranian parliament is now in the process of passing legislation which exempts the people who did this from prosecution. Mm -hmm. This is a regime, uh, not simply a repressive authoritarian regime. This is a regime of savages that has no place in the civilized world. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be uh, at the heart of the European Union because the European Union is the most important body in the world right now, the most important political body in the world right now that stands up for human rights. Um, and, and you must continue to do so. Uh, we have enormous pressure both in the United States and in Europe to let commercial interests dictate our political philosophy and our political actions. There can be no price that is worth paying for abandoning human rights, either in Ukraine or in Iran or anywhere else. And one thing that must come out of this meeting, besides denouncing the Mullah's regime, is some action. We in our country, we must not take any more short-term action regarding Iran that is contrary to our long-term interests. In 1953, over 60 years ago, the United States and Great Britain combined to remove the only democratically elected prime minister in the history of Iran, Prime Minister Mossadegh. We have paid such an enormous price for that. Today, had we not done that, the mullahs, no one ever would have heard of Omani or Hamani. That is the price of short-term political thinking and short-term political action as opposed to the sh higher price in the short term but the much lower price in the long term of long-term thinking. It does not make sense to sacrifice the lives of 2,500 unarmed people who the United States has promised to defend in order to appease the mullahs and help them get rid of the very effective and punishing sanctions on the regime. I am in favor of negotiation. Negotiation is always better than war. But I am not in favor of any negotiation that do not, first of all, end up with the freedom of the 2,500 Iranian prisoners in Iraq, and that do not secure a, a, an enforceable human rights charter inside Iran. We cannot live on the face of the globe with regimes like this. None of us are perfect. We all have to have transparency and openness. That's what we're fighting for. We must insist, as a condition of these negotiations, that we have transparency, that we have openness. And our State Department must stop talking about human rights if they don't intend to deliver them. So I want to thank you for your extraordinary work. I want to reiterate that words are not enough, that actions matter. I want to call on my own government to stop talking and start acting. And I want to say to Madame Rajavi, we appreciate very much your example. We appreciate the long road that you have struggled with. I was very proud to have been part of the effort to get your organization off the terrorist list, which it did not belong on, and to stand with you with the 10 points of the declaration that you have for human rights, not just for men, but for women 
in a new Iran, an open Iran, a democratic Iran, and it is our job, both in the United States and in Europe, to make sure that we do not simply talk about such a thing, that we actually create the reality that this can happen. Thank you very much.